Good morning, good morning, dearly beloved, your excellencies. Welcome, welcome everyone to our virtual prayer camp for the Global Business Round Table. I welcome you all who have connected with us this morning in this glorious day and in this glorious prayer camp that is filled with the glory of our God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the unchanging changer and the king of glory. The one that is the same, the same yesterday, today, and forever, who doesn't change, the unchanging changer, the one that has the power to change our circumstances and our situation. I welcome you all dearly beloved. I welcome you excellencies, royal sons and daughters of the most high God. Thank you for tuning in this morning. This is our inaugural first day of this prayer camp, this virtual prayer camp. And today I am your facilitator. We are gonna continue with our program this morning. I trust that many of you have the program. If not so, I'm going to ask the guys who are helping me to put the program on the screen as we begin. Now, welcome you, and I want, I want to say to every one of you, you are dearly loved. But let me welcome you with a sound that is in my heart this morning. I want to welcome you with a sound that is in my heart this morning. And I'm going to pray as I welcome you with this psalm. It's found in Psalm 44. Psalm 44. This is the psalm of David. And I'm going to read it. And after I've read it, open in prayer. And then we're going to go straight into our program. We love you and we thank you for having joined us this morning in this virtual prayer camp. We thank God for grace. We thank God for your lives as you are all dearly loved and precious to our Father. And I'm reading here in the Psalm 45, the Psalm of David. And David begins by saying the following. He says, we have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days, the deeds you did in their days in days of old. He says, you drove up the nations with your hand, but them you've planted. You afflicted the people and cast them out, for they did not gain possession of the land by their sword. It's not their strength that did it. And then he says, nor did their own arm save them. Oh, powerful. But it was your right hand. It was your arm and the light of your countenance because you favored them. They gained the wealth by favor. They gained the victory by the arm. They were delivered because of God. David says, we have heard. That's how faith comes. He says, we have heard of the things you have done in days of old. And his prayer is that, Lord, do them in our days. Do them again. Do the things because you are still the same. Do them today. And then he goes on. You are my king and my God. This is our king. This is our God. And he says, command victories for Jacob. Command victories for your people. He says, through you, we will push down our enemies. Through you, we will push down COVID. We will push down sicknesses. We will push down diseases. We will push down death through you. He says, through your name, we will triumph those who, who rise up against us. So anything that is risen against us through his name, we will triumph over it. We will trample it underfoot. For we will not trust in our bow. No, we will not trust in our strength. We will not trust in our arm. He says it's because of the light of your countenance, because you favored us. Let me pray this morning. And I, and I really want you to look into this psalm. It's such a powerful psalm. He says, through your name, we'll trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies 
and have put to shame those who hated us. In God we boast all day and praise his name forever. This is where we boast. We boast not in ourselves. We boast in his name. We boast, Paul says, we boast in God, not in our strength, not in what we can do, but in what he can do. When you see us so proud and so boastful, we are boasting in our God, in his capability, in who he is and what he's capable to do. We thank God that this is the God of the Global Business Roundtable and the Global Fund for Jesus. Let me just pray this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for this blessed morning and this glorious occasion, this gathering of the royal saints, your excellencies, your sons and daughters, kings and priests. Father, we've gathered this morning on this holy convocation we have gathered, you said, let the saints gather in your name. Those who have made a covenant with you. We have a covenant with you by sacrifice. We thank you. We thank, oh, Magruza. Thank you, for Lord, for your presence. Thank you for being with us this morning. And thank you for your great goodness. Thank you for leading the proceedings of this day by your spirit to us, guiding us, Lord guiding every speaker, guiding every prayer warrior, guiding everybody in the program and those who have joined in and tuned in. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are in their homes. Your presence is with them. And thank you for your glorious name and power. We bless you, Father, in Yeshua's mighty name. We have prayed and everyone said, amen. Bless you once again, beloved. We're going to go straight into the program we are having our exhorter for this morning, not a stranger to this platform, and one of our leaders in Swaziland, Apostle Becky Tala, who will take us into the exhortation this morning. Apostle, I welcome you, my dear brother, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you as you take us through exhortation this morning. The family is present. We are present in his presence and therefore await to hear what the Father is saying to you this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, let me just greet everyone uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you this morning uh, and thank God that uh, this is the first day of our prayer camp and we are so excited uh, because God is doing things his own way. You know, we have our own plans, but you know, God has better plans for us. As we can see now from the comfort of our bedrooms, comfort of our homes, we're able to join the prayer camp. So uh, it is so glorious. I know we wanted to interact and meet, uh, but I believe that all works together for good. Now, I want to just exhort you this morning, your excellencies, um, just using the entry scripture from Isaiah chapter 64, uh, verse 1, where we are just declaring open heavens, even over this meeting, and over our lives, and over our businesses, over our countries. Um, you know, I will just read Isaiah 64, verse 1. Uh, this is just a prophetic prayer um, that I believe, you know, if you read it, you feel like screaming out uh, the scripture. Uh, it says, oh, that thou would rent the heavens and come down. Oh, that thou would break forth, break open the heavens and come down. I believe that is what we are all praying for, that the Lord will open up the heavens and then show up and come down in all the spheres and all the things uh, that are happening all around us. Because as we are going to just share and encourage each other, we will see why the heavens uh, need to be open and what happens when the heavens are open. And we thank God that uh, even as we start this meeting, the heavens are open over these meetings. And throughout, we are going to see you know, the messengers and the ministers uh, of God descending and ascending and bringing messages and all that which God has for us throughout these meetings. Now, it is very possible for the heavens to be closed 
it is possible if you read from second chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 the bible says if i shut up the heavens that there be no rain and if i command the locusts to devour the land and if i send pestilence among my people then it says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land so we can see that in verse 13 the bible shows that it is possible for the heavens to be shut it is possible to walk under closed heaven it is possible to do things under closed heaven and when the heavens are closed and you know there's a, a devouring you know stuff that is sent into the earth that is destabilizing the, the life of, of, of humanity. And you know, God then says, if my people who are called by my name, so it means there are people who have the keys to open up the heavens. There are people who have the keys to cause, you know, all these calamities and the devourers uh, to, 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 to be cut off from the land. So um, it is possible for the heavens to be shut. So, now, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then uh, the heavens uh, will open up. So I want us, to, as we continue, uh, to see how we can then come in and open up the heavens. And then what happens when the heavens are open? Please, let's move to the next slide. What happens when the heavens are open? Now, when the heavens are open, God visions of God are revealed. May the visions of God be revealed throughout these meetings. I declare that we will hear things from heaven that will shift us to the next level. Because when the heavens are open, now visions of God are revealed. In Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, now it came to pass in the 13th year of the fifth day and the fourth month, while I was by the river Keba, among the exiles, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. May the visions of God be revealed to us as we sit under the open heavens in this prayer camp in the name of Jesus. Revelations chapter 19 verse 1, John says, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on it is called faithful true and righteous he judges and wages war so he saw someone sitting on a white horse and the bible says and i saw heaven open may heaven open over these meetings in the name of jesus in Acts chapter 7 verse 57 now, when Stephen was being stoned, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So, any time uh, the heavens open, there are revelations of God. May the revelations of God Glory. come upon us as we go through these meetings. May we see God, you know, in the true sense, in the re reality of his presence. Now, I declare open heavens over this meeting. Let's go to the next slide. I declare open heavens over this Glory. meeting. Glory. I declare yeah. open heavens over this meetings. Come on, sir. Let's go to the next slide. Now, the second thing that happens when the heavens open, the second thing that happens when the heavens open, can you shift the slide, please? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The future is revealed. The future mm. is revealed when the heavens open. It means there's an apostolic atmosphere that is then and a prophetic atmosphere that is released because when the future is revealed. It means God begins to uh, inform his uh, messengers, the prophets. You know, God says, I will not do anything 
uh, before informing my messengers, the prophets. So God begins to inform his messengers, the prophets, and they declare to us the things that are about to happen. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, after these things, I looked and behold a door, a door standing open in heaven. So when the doors stand open in heaven and the first voice which I heard, like the sound of the trumpet speaking with me said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. So there is a prophetic atmosphere every time the heavens open, there's a prophetic atmosphere that takes charge. We begin to uh, be called up hither, up higher, so that we can hear even clearer the things that God is about to say when heavens open, you know, you know, the second thing is the, the other thing is when heavens open, there are ordinations that take place. That means God ordains his own, God declares, God confirms his own, mm -hmm. and God releases his mighty hand upon his own. You know, we see the ordination of Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says, after being baptized, Jesus came out up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of god discerning as a dove and lighting upon him so we see that there was the ordination of the ministry of jesus right there because then the voice was heard from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased listen ye to him so we see an ordination when heavens are open the hand of god is confirmed the ministry of believers is confirmed and the purposes of our being here confirmed so when heavens open certainly there are ordinations so i believe that as we go through this prayer camp we are going to see a mighty confirmation of certain ministries apostles into the uh, you know, in, in, in every area, in every mountain are going to be released. Prophets over every mountain are going to be released through this prayer camp because heavens are open over these meetings. Now let's go to the next slide. Heavens are open over this meeting. And also when the heavens are open, the land is healed. There's a healing rain that is that begins to flow every time there is uh, open heaven. I believe that through this prayer came, there will be a shift also in the fears that people have concerning the COVID-19. There will be a shift in so many things uh, in our leaders um, concerning what the world is going through right now. Even the economic crisis that is coming, there's going to be a shift even in our thinking as the heavens open. You know, the Bible says, if my people which are called by my name, I thank God because we realize now what Abraham was asking God. He said, he would you destroy a land if there are 50 righteous? Would you destroy the land if there are 40, 30? He kept going down until God to 10. I believe that even if he go to one, God will still save the land because of the righteous. I know that through open heavens, because of the righteous present here, God is healing our land. God is healing our families. God is healing our businesses. God is healing everything that concerns us because we stand as the righteous declaring the goodness of Jehovah in the land of the living. Let's go to the next slide. I believe that the heavens are open over these uh, meetings in Jesus name. Now, glory. what we do to maintain a, an open heaven? Now, if you read the scripture in second Chronicles chapter seven, verse uh, 14, the Bible says there, number one, now if my people who which are called by my name, so I believe that to maintain an open heaven, you must be clear with your identity. Who are you? If my people who are called by my name. So God is looking for people who know who they are because it is the ones who know who they are that move in to make sure that the heavens remain open. You know, the Bible says Elijah was a man of like passion as we are. 
and he was able to pray that there would be no rain. And he prayed again that there'd be rain. So three and a half years, there was no rain at the word of this man. And the Bible says, James says, you know, we are of the same passion as he is. That means he knew who he is. We must also know who we are. So I believe under this open heavens that as we rise, knowing who we are, oh, we yeah. stand and take up our positions as children of God and we decree and declare that this COVID-19 is over in the name of Jesus. Now our Amen. business is rising in Jesus' name. We know who Glory. we are that God has created a Goshen for us, a Goshen for our businesses, a Goshen for our children, and we decree and declare that as we stand knowing who we are, everything that we decree shall be established. When people say there's a scattering, there's a casting down, we declare lifting in every area. We speak a lifting over GBR. We speak a lifting I'm over- awesome business is represented by GBR in the name of Jesus. Now, the second way we can um, uh, stand and and maintain an open heaven, then the Bible says, if they humble themselves, so humility is the way up, it is not the way down. Proverbs 18, verse 12, and Proverbs 15, verse 33, you can read through, destruction comes, be, you know, uh, 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 pride comes before destruction. So it means as we humble ourselves, destruction is av- averted, destruction is avoided. We are protected from any form of harm because of humility. The Lord will only exhort those who are humble, those who are contrite in spirit. May the Lord cause and constant open heavens because of humility in the name of Jesus. The third thing, and then he says, mm. and then Lord. we pray. Prayer is the key. Jesus said, I wonder if I will find faith on earth if people don't pray. Prayer is the key. You don't need to be anxious in all the anxiety that has come over man. You, the Bible says you must present your request before God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. James chapter 5, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Now, prayer is the key to a victorious love. Prayer is the key to a constant open heaven. May we live in constant open heaven. Number four, the last one is, you know, turn away from your wicked ways. In Ezekiel 33 verse 11, the Bible says, say unto them, as I live, said the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Now, but that the wicked turn from his own way and live ten ye ten ye from your evil ways from for why ye will die, O house of Israel. That means God is saying, I'm not pleased seeing the wicked die. I all mm. order I need from them is for them to turn from their wicked ways. May we turn from our wicked ways because the Bible says here, as as my people turn away from their wicked ways. Now, this is just a form of repentance. Change the way you re, you think. Change the way uh, you've been doing things. Repent. Turn again to the higher position, to the top life, to the higher life that is God has called us to. So when we maintain open heavens, we maintain it through turning away from wicked ways. God is not pleased that people die in their wickedness. He wants them to turn, turn, turn. And so this is how we can maintain uh, an open heaven. May God open up every door that the blessing of God may begin to flow. May the angels over these meetings begin to uh, flow up and down as they release the blessings of God over GBR uh, camp uh, and prayer camp in the name of Jesus. Uh, to God, to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you for that word. What a, what a powerful word. What a powerful word. When the heavens are open, the future is revealed. When the whole heavens are open, there's divine ordination. When the heavens are open, there is a healing rain. When the heavens are open, there's angelic activity. I'm going to ask Apostle Quinton to please lead us in prayer. What a powerful exhortation this morning. 
Apostle Quinton. Good morning, beloved. Greetings, Your Excellencies. I'll be leading in prayer in agreement with the word that was just shared with us. Jesus teaches us regarding prayer. He says, um, pray that God's kingdom comes, that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we've heard the word, if there's one way that uh, God's will and God's kingdom is going to be released on earth, it's going to be through prayer. But the reality is, is there's a blockage between the third heaven and the first heaven. And, and this morning, I'm going to lead us in prayer just to, to unstop that blockage. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, continue in agreement. Father God, we, we bless you. We praise you. We honor you, almighty God. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who will now help us pray the perfect will of God regarding the 11th prayer camp of GBI. According to your word, Father, in Jeremiah 1.12, you watch over that word, ready to perform it, even as we speak it, as we declare it, O oh God. Father God, according to Isaiah 55, 11, your word says, Lord, that the word, which is you, will accomplish what it is sent for in our lives and the lives of the people of GBR, GFFJ, and even as the saints of God throughout the earth. And it shall not return void. But it will accomplish what it is sent for in our lives and even through our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. According to Psalms 138 verse 2, the word says that we worship toward the almighty God's holy temple and praise his holy name for his loving kindness and for his truth, which makes free. For the Almighty God has magnified his word above his name. And that is why we're praying his word this morning to unstop and unblock Lord. the heavens. Therefore, this morning we pray and declare the word of God in every area of our lives, in every area and function of the lives of the people of GBR, GFFJ, in the lives of families, communities, cities, nations throughout the earth. We speak, pray, declare Isaiah chapter 4, 45 and verse 8. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Isaiah 45 and verse 8. For it says, drop down ye heavens from above and that the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Father, even as we pray back your word to you, it comes as a form of high praise unto you, O God. We thank you, Father God. According to your word in Isaiah 45, 8. That you orchestrate the heavens and the earth this day. We know that according to Gen, uh, Daniel chapter 10, that the host of the kingdom of darkness, those fallen princely angels who have territorial power as gatekeepers over regions, that they fight. There's a warfare in the heavens to block the answers to every prayer ascending from GBR, from GFFJ and the saints on the earth. And as those created, in the image and the likeness of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we this morning decree and declare from the different parts of the earth this morning that according to Psalms 103 verse 20, the heavenly hosts, the angels that excel in strength and do the commandments of the Most High God, that these are now on behalf of GBR and GFFJ and the saints are hearkening unto the voice of the word of God. They are going forth and they are warring in the heavenlies, overcoming and pushing back every evil prince and gatekeeper 
over every province and every nation on the face of the earth. We declare that the evil forces of darkness are being pushed back and are now retreating even as the Lord of hosts leads angelic forces and pursues them and destroys the demonic hole over regions in nations. We decree that evil princes over nations are being replaced with righteous gatekeepers and blockages are being removed in the heavens. Angels are ascending and descending with remedies for every predicament and challenge. Angels are ascending and descending with revelation from God, revealing the mysteries that God wants to release on this earth to come and change and prepare the harvest, the end time harvest for the almighty God to return, to make manifest every word spoken by the prophets of God, that there will be a restoration uh, according to words spoken by the, every prophet of God so that we can see the return of Jesus Christ. We declare that the skies are pouring natural, moral, and legal righteousness, which results in an in, in equity and prosperity for GBR, GFFJ, and the saints of the Most High God. We declare that the first heaven over the earth is opening wide and creating a divine connection with God and His people, made possible through altars erected across the nations of the earth this morning. We thank you, Lord. That through the opening and the connection created liberty, salvation, deliverance, prosperity, security, stability, significance, and self-worth is unstopped and it is breaking forth. It is breaking forth. It is breaking forth Glory. In, the, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is breaking forth in every home. It is breaking forth in every family. It is breaking forth in every nation throughout this earth. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We declare that even as our God, Jehovah, orchestrates the heavens this day, that the divine release brings forth and bears multiplication. And there's an increase and an expansion in every nation. There's an increase and ex an expansion in GBR and GFFJ. And even in this prayer camp, in the name of Jesus Christ, almighty God, we declare salvation, deliverance, righteousness, is uniting in agreement and there's a springing up there's a sprouting there's a bringing forth there's a budding forth of all jehovah the self-existent covenant making covenant keeping covenant honoring god wants to release Lord. in gbr in GFFJ and in every mandate and in every vision given to visionaries upon the earth and in every nation and on the earth in this season and even throughout this year and even throughout this prayer camp in Jesus mighty awesome beautiful wonderful name and we just give you glory almighty god we just bless you we praise you we honor you we adore you we thank you that your word ascends up unto you this morning as i praise and almighty god did it ascends unto you as a sweet smelling aroma almighty god father and we declare this morning that we see a manifestation Station of what was prayed. We see a manifestation of your word taught and spoken today. We see a manifestation each and every day of this prayer camp. We see a manifestation after manifestation after manifestation of the supernatural of your glory, oh God, increasing, intensifying as we go through each and every day this week, oh God, through every day of this prayer camp, almighty God. Oh, and we thank you for every miracle. We thank you for every sign. We thank you for every wonder, oh God. We thank 
thank you for every supernatural divine intervention in every circumstance and every situation in our lives oh god and what it is that you will work even through our lives almighty god in the name of jesus father we thank you almighty god that you will be removing the veil from the eyes of our understanding oh god that we may know the hope of your calling and experience oh god that that you have as an inheritance in the saints oh god as an investment in each and every one of us the saints oh god and that we will walk in the fullness of all that you intended for us to have through the completed work of calvary through the completed work of jesus christ on the cross in jesus name and so this morning oh god oh we promise to give you the glory we promise to give you the honor we promise to give you the highest praise we promise oh god to use the word of our testimony and in the blood of jesus as we overcome the evil one in these last days as we make ourselves available oh god to be used by you to bring in that end time harvest oh god oh god in the name of jesus christ and we declare that there's nothing and no one no illness yes, no Lord. disease no pandemic no government nothing no one can stand in the way of your will being of your will prevailing oh god of your kingdom coming oh god of your will being done on the earth as it is in heaven in the yes, presence of gbr as it is in heaven oh god in jesus name we bless you, Lord. Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We thank you for who you are to us. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Apostle Quentin. Thank you for that prayer. Just some few, few uh, announcements. I just also want to welcome and acknowledge the convener the apostle over this particular mandate and calling of the Global Business Roundtable and Global Fund for Jesus. I want to acknowledge you, Your Excellency, the convener, Sipom Seleku, and also acknowledge the head of intercession globally, Pastor Carol. I welcome you and acknowledge you. Thank you again for giving me the privilege and the opportunity for this first day. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you so much. Thank you for that weight based scriptural prayer. That is the word that opens the heaven. I want to also just uh, send some few announcements that beloved, we are on YouTube. We are already live on YouTube. We hoping tomorrow will also be live on Facebook. So we can share this broadcast and share it with others. Please let's take others, let's um, tell them the prayer camp has started. Just other announcements we are about at the moment we have about 10 nations we expected to be joined by three more we have south africa lesotho swaziland ghana gabon switzerland senegal kenya malawi usa botswana mozambique and zimbabwe are also coming on board if i have not acknowledged you and you are from another nation can i ask you to please please on the comments just write from which nation, if I have not acknowledged you. We are on a global altar as I speak. We are on a global altar. The nations have gathered in this altar, which is the global altar, the altar of the Global Business Roundtable that the Lord has raised for the hour such as days. So we may bring the nations to King Yeshua Hamashiach. Now, beloved, we're going on with our program. And I'm going to welcome for the next exhorter, which is none other than the, uh, oh, Belgium, Belgium, Bishop Taylor, thank you. And Belgium as well is on the platform. So I want to welcome Pastor Oluwatomi Oyabanji, uh, our head in Nigeria, also the head of the fivefold. Uh, we acknowledge and welcome you, uh, Pastor Oluwatomi Oyabanji as the next exhorter. He will be dealing on the subject of sanctification, which leads into holiness so that we can administer the holy altar of the Lord. Apostle, I welcome you on the stage. 
Thank you very much, Your Excellency, my brother, Apostle Yalungu. Thank you for, for opening us up to God this morning. Once again, I, I welcome every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, to this amazing time in God's presence. Is the first of its kind. We are doing a virtual prayer camp online across the nations of the world. I want to thank Jesus. I want to thank the Holy Spirit. And I want to thank the leadership of the Global Business Roundtable, who has counted me worthy this morning to bring a word of exhortation in the next few minutes. Uh, I want to thank all the speakers that have spoken before me, particularly Apostle Becky Twella, uh, Apostle Quentin. Thank you very much for causing us to experience open heaven. And when the heavens are open, the glory of God and his power will descend. This moment, we are going to be talking about a very important subject, which is the subject of sanctification. Because we are, we are in a time where uh, the Bible was, was talking in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. He said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemy, disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accuser, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good, traitor, eddy, high minded, lover of pleasure, more than lover of God. They will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such people turn away. Brethren, we are, we are in this last day, and that's why this subject is very important. But thanks be to God, beloved, we serve a God that is the only God. His name alone is holiness. A God that the Bible describes whose eyes is too pure to behold iniquity. The Bible admonishes us that without holiness, none of us shall see this God, even now and in eternity. So holiness is key for us to meet with God because God is the Holy God. Therefore, today is my prayer that we must have grace. According to his word in the book of Hebrew, chapter 12, he said, we have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. April 13, 28. We all as children of God must live and walk with the understanding that we have been washed by the precious blood of Jesus to live a life pleasing unto the Lord as children of God on earth. We are therefore encouraged to possess our vessel uh, in sanctification unto the Lord. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, I would like to read that scripture for the benefit of everyone listening to me this morning. Say, so furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as we have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye will abound more and more. For ye know that the commandment we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God. What is the will of God? Even your sanctification. He said, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. That is the admonition of Paul to the church, not in the loss of conspicuencies, even as the Gentile, which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of such. As we also have forewarned you and testify, for God had not called us unto uncourt uncleanliness, for God has called us unto holiness. Beloved, the end time where we find ourselves is, is, is described as a time of darkness, a perilous time, a time where the mystery of iniquity is working. He said the mystery of iniquity already worked. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. The mystery of iniquity already worked. But praise be to the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us by his word that he is our sanctification. He is our sanctifier. 
in Leviticus 21, verse 8, say, Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offereth bread of, unto the God, it shall be holy unto thee, for I, the Lord, which sanctify you, I am holy. So according to Leviticus 28, verse 21, verse 8, God is the one that sanctifies us. He is holy and he will sanctify us. So we have a duty to connect to that God this morning because that God is our sanctifier and he will sanctify us. In Leviticus 20, 26, he said, You shall be holy unto me, for I am the Lord, I am holy. He said, I will sever you from other people, ye should be mine. So the Bible says, God is holy and God wants us to be separated. So the question this morning, as we look at the teaching of sanctification, is that what, what is the meaning of sanctification? What does it mean to be sanctified? Sanctification to me, it means to be spiritually clean. To be spiritually clean. When you are spiritually clean, you are seen to be sanctified. To be spiritually purified. To be made only unto the Lord. So a sanctified person is that person that is spiritually clean, spiritually purified, and made holy unto the Lord. So when you are made holy unto the Lord, you are described as somebody that is sanctified. Also, we can describe sanctification to mean to be separated from sin, to be separated from sin, to be separated from impurities, to be separated from uncleanliness, to be separated from defilement, to be separated from worldliness, to be separated from corruption, to be separated from anything that doesn't glorify the name of the Lord in our bodies as we live on earth. So when you say somebody is sanctified, it is that man, it is that woman, that child of God that have made up his or her mind to be separated from sin to be separated from impurities, uncleanliness, defilement, worldliness, corruption, anything that does not glorify God in our body. He said, for we possess our body in holiness. So also, I would like to define sanctification to mean living the superior life of a child of God in light above darkness and all its elements. When you are living a superior life of God, in the light of his word, above darkness and all the element of darkness, you are living a sanctified life. So sanctification can also mean holiness, purity of heart, purity of the soul, purity of the body, and the spirit in man. Sanctification can mean what? Holiness, purity of the heart, of the soul, of the body, and the spirit. So every one of us that are children of God, we must strive. We must strive unto salvation. The Bible is speaking. He said we should walk out our salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. So it is your duty. It is my duty as we go into this prayer camp in this one week, brethren. We must approach the Lord sanctified. God spoke to the children of Israel in the days of Moses. In Exodus, it said to them, it said, sanctify yourself. On the third day, I will come down. So sanctification for me is the will of God. What somebody will say, what is the essence of sanctification? Sanctification is the will of the Lord for us as kingdom children and citizens of heaven on earth. It's the will of God. It is the will of God. So when you are a sanctified believer, you are doing the will of God. The essence of sanctification is to make us ready for the day of the visitation of the Lord and for us to be acceptable to him. Exodus 19, verse 10 to 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of the people upon Mount Senia. Remember in Hosea chapter 6, he said, the first day and the second day will revive us. But on the third day, he will raise us up. So we cannot experience the visitation of the Lord until we are a sanctified people. 
So in this mm. prayer, mm. as we move forward, each one of us must ask the Lord, even today, to sanctify us. Spirit, yes, Lord. And God. Because yes, Lord. Our, our sanctification is our inheritance delivered. Look at what Paul spoke to the, to the, to the, to the church in Acts chapter 20, verse 32. He said, now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So there is no inheritance that can be delivered except on the platform of sanctification. So if we are going to mm. take the of God's blessing in this prayer camp going forward in the year 2021, in spite of the pandemic, brethren, righteousness, the Bible says, exhort a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So we must, as a necessity, make a choice for holiness. Holiness unto God is a must in our journey with him going forward. So as we approach God in this prayer camp, we must believe God for a sanctification. How to be sanctified? I want to say this, brethren, without missing word, that sanctification is a deliberate act which we must consciously subscribe to and we must walk in it as the children of the Most High God. It is a deliberate act. It's not, it's not a gift per se. It is what we must all walk in because it is enough to know that Jesus Christ is our righteousness in God. But if we don't work it out deliberately, we might lose it. But I pray for each one of us that our sanctification will be entered in Jesus' name. So to be sanctified require our effort by the provision of the covenant and the redemptive work Jesus has already offered us. So how do I get sanctified? Number one, you get sanctified through your obedience to God and to all of his injunctions. If you are a child given to obeying God, you will be sanctified. Number two, you get sanctified by grace. The Bible says in Titus that the grace of God has appeared to us, teaching us to say no to all form of ungodliness. Titus 2 11. So if you see a man that is graced, he said, draw near in Hebrew chapter 4, he said, draw near to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. Brethren, this end time, as children of God, we must recognize that we are in the time of need. So we must go to him to lay hold on grace that is able to help us to say no to every form of ungodliness. Also, we can be sanctified by our choices and our decisions. The choice you make, the decision you make, if you decide that I will live a life honorable to God, acceptable to God, the Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 19, he said, the foundation of the Lord stands sure. It has a seal. He said, let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. He said, if a man poured himself of all this, it will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use. So it's by our choice and by our decision. Number four, we are sanctified by the enablement of the Holy Spirit of God that lives in us and with us always. Everyone that is born of God, that have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost resides in you and he lives with you. So you must take advantage of the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. He's the purifier. He purifies us with fire. He said when he comes, he will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So the fire of the Holy Ghost is able to burn off all chaff of ungodliness and corruption out of our system. First Corinthians 6, 11 said, and such we are some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So our sanctification, our justification, our cleansing is by the spirit of God. First Corinthians 6, 11. Number five, we are sanctified by the word of the Lord. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 17, verse 17, verse 19 and 20, they sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And for their sake, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither I pray for this alone, but for all them also which shall believe on me through their word. So the word of God is our sanctifier. David said in the book of Psalm 119, 
He said, your word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin. He said, how can a young man cleanse his way? He said, by taking heed to the word of the Lord. Every time you allow the intake of God's word, you are purified, you are sanctified. And I see us, by the washing of the water of the world, our life will be purified on this mountain. Number six, we are sanctified on the altar of the Lord in the place of prayer. That is why we have come to this place. Okay. We go out with a glorified body, we go out sanctified. So we are sanctified through the righteous fellowship and keeping godly relationship. So when we come to congregate, they forsake not the assembly of the believers. So as we congregate like this in a prayer camp like this, we are being sanctified. We are sanctified by the mystery of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. In the book of First Peter, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, peace be multiplied. So through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are being sanctified. The Bible said in the book of Hebrew, chapter 10, verse 19 to 20, say, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way, which has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are being sanctified. But my charge this morning for each one of us is that we must note that brethren, no unrighteous person, no unrighteous person, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, for ye know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornication, nor idolater, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuser of themselves with mankind, nor thief, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revealers, nor exhorters shall inherit the kingdom of God. Brethren, it is our decision today that we must inherit God's kingdom. And I pray for each one of us on this mountain of the Lord in this year, 2021, that we are congregating, that we will be righteous. We all shall be a partaker of the kingdom of God. It's time for the kingdom of God to be exalted on the earth. And righteousness is the garment we must put on. Righteousness is the nature that we must put on. We must be like him to do like him. We must live like him to do like him. If we must do the work of the father, then we must be like the father. If we must do the work of Jesus, then we must be like Jesus. If we must do the work in the Holy Ghost, then we must live by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. So one of the prayers we should pray, brethren, before the person that will take intercession is that we should pray that God should cleanse all our environment. Every environment, we will pray this prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, we engage the mystery of the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. For sanctity, for purity, for total cleansing of the vicinity, the physical, spiritual atmosphere of the location. Yes, where the member of GBR dwell for the true worship of the Lord. Every location where we are dwelling right now in this prayer camp, we want to pray that by the mystery of the blood of Jesus, those vicinity will be sanctified, they will be yes, purified, Lord. they will be cleansed, they will be, it will be a, a holy atmosphere around the yes, in your family house, in your home, in your offices, wherever you yes, find Lord. all through this camp, I declare, I decree, that we release the holy atmosphere of God in the name of Jesus. We invoke holiness into our life, into our environment, spiritual and physical. We plead the blood of Jesus for total yes, of the people of God. We declare from today that the foundation upon which our life is built, the foundation upon which GBR is built, the foundation in which our marriages, our family, our businesses, our ministries are built yes, a foundation of righteousness in Christ Jesus, a foundation of love, of unity, of faith, that we will live a life from today that will glorify the name of Jesus. And from this day, we shall have an identity with the living God in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning in Jesus' 
mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, brethren, for this privilege. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Apostle. Bless you for that word. I also want to pray. Father, we pray that the word, the truth required to sanctify GBR into the next level of yes. this mandate yes. to administer the nature, the glory of God, the truth required. Father, for every leader, every member, every body, Father, that truth, even as you prayed in John 7, verse 7, Verse 17, verse 17, sanctify them by your word. Lord, let the word that is required, the word for this season, that will bring us into the next level to carry the next level of glory, of your power, of your wisdom into the earth, into every city, every nation, every town, Father, in every kingdom, Father, in every sphere of life and society. Father, sanctify all the apostles and prophets in the marketplace sanctify every child of yours, every saint, every believer. Sanctify them by divine truth. Let the truth be revealed. Let the truth that is required, Father, to move this divine organization to the next level of your glory, of your power, be released. Let the truth, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, sanctify us for your by your word, for your weight is truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless you. Bless you, my brother. Bless you so much. Bless you. As my brother, His Excellency Oyobanji, we are going to be joined right now by our dearly brother, John Ayeye from Ghana. So we've just moved from Swaziland South Africa, Nigeria, to Ghana. So we are one, I want to welcome my dear brother, John Aye. Love you. Love you, sir. Welcome you to the platform as you lead us in prayer. Thank you. Good morning to you all. I come to your house. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I miss you very much, Brother Joseph. It's a pleasure to see you. My sermon this morning is to administrate sanctification. And I must admit that I am the number one person that needs sanctification. I would also want to take it from where Pastor Oyebanji left off, that sanctification is a process. So this morning, I have broken my presentation into four parts. But before I go into it, the slide you have in front of you says, let there be light. Sanctification cannot begin without illumination. You have to understand that where you are, it's not where you ought to be before you can begin to sanctify yourself for something better. Mm. Bible says we force seven times we rise and we have fallen more than seven times. The most important thing is that we rise. What do we rise to? We rise to illumination. And as Pastor Ibanji was presenting that towards the end, he says that, that the platform or GBR will be sanctified to the next level. My focus this morning is that GBR will receive the illumination to be sanctified into the next level. Glory. Next slide, if you don't mind. I don't want to spend too much time. I just want to administrate this. So next slide. The next slide talks about personal sanctification. And I want to use the story of Paul. Paul on the way after persecuting believers encountered the Lord Jesus himself. And verse 15 of Acts 26 tells us that then I asked, who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus whom you, have whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I declare this morning that we'll all get up and stand on our feet. Whatever has caused us to bow down our heads, Father, I declare this morning that your grace is sufficient for us. 
And so we stand not in our own identity, but we stand in the identity of Christ, in the blood that he shed for us on Mount Calvary. The Lord will arise this day, O oh God, on our feet, because we want to encounter you. It says, I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant, as the witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I'll rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I'm sending you to them to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Father, we come before you this morning. God, Lord, we will encounter you. Because when we encounter your light, every darkness in our lives disappear. Lord, we lift up every individual on this platform, every believer in the world that is going through one challenge or the other that the cares of this world is pressurizing into directions that they never imagined they would walk. The Lord, your mighty hand will begin to locate them and rescue them and cause them to stand this morning one more time. Stand firm knowing that you are the one and only true God. Lord, this prayer camp is held yearly to bring us to the remembrance that we are nothing without you. So Lord, this morning, let your mighty hand of salvation rescue us from wherever we are so that we can be part of your sanctified group in faith. You said faith comes by hearing. So Lord, as my senior brothers have prayed, Father, give us a word that will increase our sanctification towards you, that will increase our holiness towards you, that will increase our purity towards you, oh God. Time, if any person is slipping away, Father, we activate your voice into their conscience to return back to you. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 21 says, those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. So Lord, this morning, we are your workmanship. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 tells us that you created us in your own image and you gave us a mandate. It says, the, earth, the heavens are yours, but the earth you have given to us. Lord, and without sanctification, without being holy, without obeying you, O oh God, we cannot achieve that which you sent us here for. So, Lord, we are your instrument. You said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice before the Lord. Living sacrifice, not dead sacrifices, but living sacrifices. Living sacrifices, living things have blood flowing through them. They have breath. And so, Lord, we come before you as living sacrifices, presenting our bodies this morning for cleansing, oh God. For washing, oh God. For purification, oh God. You know every corner of our hearts. So we present our hearts on your altar this morning. Acts 26 verse 18. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan. So that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And a place among those who are sanctified by faith. In him. It's always a place for God. 
There's a place we are yearning to get to on a personal level, oh God. But the cares of this world, the challenges of this world draw us back. So this morning, Lord, we have come boldly before your throne of grace. We have come boldly before your throne of grace. Knowing that because you loved us, you sent your son to die for us, which is why we can come boldly before you. Thank you, Lord, for receiving us this morning into the fold of your sanctified. For you are giving us a word, surely in this season, for that which you are about to do. Family sanctification. Family sanctification. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14 says, For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. My prayer is that the Lord will align families to his purpose. And my scripture for prayer this morning is Acts chapter 17, verse 26, which says, From one man he made all nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out the appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. Appointed times in history. Father, we come before you. If there is any woman on this platform that has cried for the, found, for the sanctification or the saving of her home, Lord, may you stretch forth your hands this morning into that home and encourage this woman, encourage this mother, encourage this sister to know that by virtue of covenant of marriage, all she has to do is to remain sanctified. For your word has assured us that we should let our good works be seen before men that will behold you the father. Father, touch the heart of a crying mother this morning who is weeping for the salvation of a son. Encourage a father who is confused about how to manage the sanctification, the holiness in his home. Because the children seem wayward. Remind that father that you are a tutor to his children. Remind that mother. Comfort that mother this morning, oh God, that has a heavy heart. To know, oh God, that you are their sufficiency. And that you are working everything to align their families, oh God into your holiness, into your path, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, touch hearts, O God, for I see your hands stretching and touching hearts and rearranging arteries, rearranging valves to receive fresh blood flow, to receive fresh blood flow. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood for families. As my brother said earlier, you can only receive from the platform of sanctification. So, Lord, as you align families, O oh God, may they begin to locate themselves in history, especially in this season, O oh God. As they stretch forth their hands towards you, out of any pit, any challenge, any valley, O oh God, May you stretch forth your hands to us here. I see the Lord perform surgery on hearts, oh God. On hearts, if there is anybody feeling guilty or being judged, your conscience is judging you for something that you've done. I want to tell you this morning that the Lord is a sufficiency and is here to sanctify. We are not saints. We are still being molded by the Lord. We are still being molded by the Lord. 
So families, receive your assignments. Receive your assignments. Receive your assignments. Oh, mother, receive your assignment. Stop you tripping yourself. Oh, Father, likewise, stop guilt tripping yourself for the lack of response unto holiness by your children. For the Lord has seen your sacrifice and would align your family in his time and in his season. Maharoski ashanda kise baruma ya kasande ba shakai sonda kasalabado saya shanda laba. Mahasoke teri si anda laba ko shahi santa kabaro si kasande kabasha kaba. Father, I speak into families this morning. Any guilt that has covered families from the latter, Father, let your renewing spirit begin to renew them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ha, Shando Sayakaba. I'll come back to this. Generational repentance. Generational repentance. Many a times we see ourselves doing things that we never thought we could do. We never imagined that was part of us. We never thought that we could do it. But there's something interesting about generation. It's a gene interpretation. So it's gene rational. There is a gene or a DNA that is for the IAE family. And as we reproduce, our genes are rationed into our offsprings, which is why when Abraham was paying tithe, the Bible was clear that he was paying tithe even to generations in his offspring. Uh, in his in his loins is a gene rationing which is why as fathers or as mothers whatever we do we ought to be cautious because we are rationing our genes now we are rationing so lord your word says in exodus chapter 34 verse 7 that you keeping mercy, you keep it for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means cleanse the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children. Unto the third and fourth generation. It doesn't mean God is wicked. I just want to explain something to you quickly before I administrate this because it's important. At every given time, there's at least four generations alive. At every given time. So if the first generation alive commits any kind of sin, it is visible to at least three generations down the line. And depending on the lifespan of the first generational member that committed the iniquity, it might affect the fourth generation. Because if he's still alive, the fourth generation, the, the, the Fifth generation that will be born, or the fourth generation that will be born after that iniquity will witness that iniquity. Now, whatever we see is very difficult to take out of our hearts. That is why Job said, I have covenanted my eyes with the Lord. So, to take out that iniquity, God must deal with it in the gene rationing of the generations alive that will see it until he has seen that there is a new generation that he has called out and has changed any gene misappropriation from them. So I want to pray this morning that every generation living will come alive. That deep will begin to call on to deep. First Peter 2 verse 9, we all know this scripture. But you are a chosen generation. Lord, choose our generation this morning for sanctification. Whatever our fathers, our grandfathers may have done, or whatever culture they have assumed, 
or whatever disposition that they are operating in, that is unholy. But because of lack of understanding, we have embraced. Lord, your word says in 1 Peter 2, 9, that we are a chosen people. So Lord, because we are chosen, set us apart this morning as priest, calling us out of every darkness, oh God. Every generation living, we call you out of every darkness into the marvelous light of the living God this morning. Every generation, every gogo, every grandmother that is still on their beds now, feeling guilty, we call you out of the darkness of feeling guilty into the light of the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he died for you and that all you ought to do is to receive him. Every father or mother, especially in their sick beds, feeling guilty, we take away every blanket of guilt that has become a covering from seeing the salvation of the Lord this morning. And we call you into the wonderful light of the living God this morning. There is now no more condemnation once you receive Christ and begin to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Receive this morning the sanctification that God earmarked for us. Every blanket of guilt. Lord, when your blood touched the earth, the veil was opened and the holy place was revealed. This morning, oh God, usher our generation as your blood touches the earth this morning because it was slain from the foundations of the earth. So as deep is calling on to deep this morning, oh God, that every veil that has covered us, that every veil that has prevented us from entering your holy place, we remove now, oh God, that we'll receive illumination that comes from your word to build our faith, to walk into your holy place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now corporately, oh God, we come before you. Corporately, we come before you for a corporate sanctification this morning. From Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14 to 18, it says, For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts. I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I'll remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Prayer, that all will come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ in his love. Brethren, many a times we have condemned other people. We have condemned other religions. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't give it to apostles. He didn't, sorry, he didn't give him for apostles. He didn't give him for prophets. He didn't give him, as a matter of fact, when Christ came, he says he didn't come for those who are well, but he came for those who are sick. So if we are imitators of our father, then we ought to go for those who are sick. We are privileged in this season to fellowship on sophisticated tools and materials because we have privilege to afford these resources. But there are others who cannot fellowship and so they cannot build their faith as fast as we are building it because of lack of fellowship. 
I will pray this morning to legislate that whatever Corona has caused, that the Lord will bring it into alignment in the mighty name of Jesus. So that those who do not have these means of fellowshipping, so they can sharpen the continents of one another, will begin to break the barriers that they face and begin to work themselves onto sanctification and onto holiness. This righteousness from Romans chapter 3, verse 22, verse 24, this righteousness is given through faith so that, Lord, we all begin to gravitate towards your unadulterated word that comes to chastise, that comes to correct, that comes to direct, that comes to perfect in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there's no difference between Jew, Gentile, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, Lord, we pray for Muslims around the world. We pray for Shintus around the world. We pray for other religions around the world. That, Lord, you will begin to use us as examples, teaching them your love, teaching them your holiness, so that, Lord, our lives will be a door opening up, leading meaning unto your salvation, unto your sanctification, unto your holiness. So that, Lord, we all with unveiled faces can behold your glory. Before this morning, Lord, you placed a word in my heart. The pride goes before a fall. And you said, pride happens before it is manifested. Pride begins when we disobey God because he's always speaking to us in many ways through conscience. So Lord, I pray that we'll remain humble before you. We'll remain humble under your mighty hand. We'll remain humble when you speak speak so that Lord that which you say that we should come unto you for your yoke is easy for your yoke is humility and meekness that we will walk this day in humility in human dignity knowing that we are all equal before you because you created all of us you love all of us but you're calling all of us onto sanctification, onto holiness, onto a holy walk with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, O God, for visiting Maros this morning. Thank you for visiting structures this morning. Thank you for calling the dry bones to stand one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father that your army is rising this morning from the ashes. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. For indeed, you are a good God. You are a good God. Hallelujah. Who is like unto you. Brethren, join me. Let's, play, let's praise the name of the Father. Thank we you, thank Father. you, Heavenly Father. We bless thank your holy you, name. Jesus. Glory. Father, we thank you. For who are we without you? Yes. Thank you for reminding us this morning one more time that yes. we are nothing without you. Thank yes. you, King of Kings. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. We bless your name. We bless Thank your holy name. We glorify your name. Thank you. In the Jesus. mighty name of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For that say the Lord, I have promised you I am doing a new thing. Mm. It is my word that I am waiting to perform. Yes, Lord. And this season you will see my hand at work. 
Yes, friend. But I need you to be obedient to my word. Yes, Lord. I am a perfect God. Yes, Lord. And I do things in perfection. Yes, Lord. My perfection is revealed through obedience. I have said I will do a new thing. I have begun doing my new things. And I will finish whatever I have begun. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Robert, take over. Thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for that flow of the spirit. Thank you for being so precise and accurate in the spirit, in the delivery of that word for this season. Because there cannot be, there cannot be the glory without sanctification. Even as the Lord said, sanctify the people for tomorrow. I'm going to come down. This is what the awakening is about. It's about the sanctification. I am hearing very clear in the spirit even from Apostle Becky Twala about the issue of humility, the mm -hmm. issue of humility, mm -hmm. because humility in God's kingdom goes before honor, before glory, before manifestation. Mm -hmm. We have to come into alignment to the word, the will, and the dictates of the spirit of God in the heart mm -hmm. of God to seek the manifestation mm -hmm. of the glory. So I feel that we must corporately go into repentance because the spirit of God is really telling us because of the pride of man's heart, even in the nations, you know, we have pushed aside God, trusting in the armor of flesh in ourselves, in our minds, in our abilities. So I'm gonna ask Pastor Carol to blow the shofar and I know we left for a few minutes, but I'm bringing it from Joel chapter two, verse one. It says, blow, the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. He says, let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. We tremble at the glory of God and who God is. And what we've seen in the nations is that the leaders in the nations have despised God, trusted in their minds and science and not in God. And that is pride, that's trusting in the arm of the flesh. Again, in 12.2, Verse 15, he says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate the fast. And we've been in a fast. Call a sacred assembly. This is a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. There needs to be sanctification of the congregation by the light of truth. So I'm going to ask Pastor Carol to blow the shofar. We are declaring we are in the holy mountain. We're in the mountain of the Lord. We've gathered as his assembly. We've gathered to him. We've gathered to hear him, to hear what he said to the nations and to declare that. And he's telling us about our pride. We need to be humble. Our leaders need to be humble. Again, the Lord spoke about establishment of righteousness, righteous leaders in the nations, leaders who fear God. Second Samuel 23, verse two, David says, those who rule amongst men must rule in the fear of God. There's so much pride. There's so much trusting in oneself. And the pride of men must come down, must be humble. Therefore, I'm going to ask Pastor Carol to blow the shofar. And we're going to go into corporate prayer together, just for five minutes. And then from then, we will do communion and go into worship before we end the session. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Apostle Joseph, uh, I don't know if I'm coming through, but um, I felt the Lord say, and I want to honor our, our speakers today and our prayer champions, and I want to thank you for your obedience 
and my heart has been deeply stirred. And um, I just want to acknowledge uh, and express gratitude for your lives and for, for, for what has happened this morning. I think we can all say that the Lord has spoken to us, but I hear one word for, for us as a body, as GBR and GFFJ, and the Lord is giving us a reset in the realm of the spirit. We have an opportunity to reset. So I just want to submit that. Um, lovely to see you all. We miss you as well. Uh, John Ayayi, it was so awesome to see you all. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand back to you, Apostle Joseph. I'm just going to pray just for two minutes in terms of the word from Apostle Becky Twala to Apostle Quentin, to um, Pastor Yabanji, and to my brother, John Ayayi, what I'm hearing the Spirit is saying. And I believe it's a word to the nations on this platform of GBR. So I want to just pray in terms of humility, and those who can, and it resonates in your heart, you can open your mics and join us as we pray, just for a few minutes. Father, in the mighty and the precious name, the name that is holy for you, our Father, our Holy. Yes. Father, we bring repentance on behalf of the nations and the leaders of nations on behalf of presidents and their council. We repent for the spirit of pride. We repent for trusting in the armor of flesh. We repent because this has shown us that we don't actually trust you even within the ecclesia, that we don't look up to you. We look up to ourselves. We trust in our armor. We trust in what we can do. But even as we began and read in Psalms 44, David says, it's not our armor. It's not our hand that saved us. it is you. That their fathers did not look to themselves, but they looked to you. You said in Isaiah, look to me and be saved. All you ends of the earth. Father, we call for the spirit of humility amongst our leaders. We call for the spirit of we repent, Lord, have mercy us. Have forgive us. for the pride of our heart. Forgive us for trusting ourselves, not in you, not calling on you. You have brightened us. You have taken us from your way. 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 we should be Nobody likes to cheat. 
and we have Amen. I know apostle people will continue to pray, but let me invite you to the platform. Knowledge Apostle Walile Mamba from Swaziland to lead us in a moment of communion. After the communion, we just thank the Lord and go into worship. We just left with 15 minutes and then we'll have 10 minutes of praise and worship. But I want to invite Apostle Walile Mamba to lead us into communion. After communion, we can blow the sofa, close in prayer, and there'll be worship for those who want to remain for worship. Apostle Walile, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, special greetings to the convener and uh, greetings to your excellency. Thanking the Lord for this honor and privilege to be on this global platform. Thanking the Lord for the powerful prayers that have been made. Thanking the Lord for the answers it's me and you. made. As we were praying, the Lord yeah. just laid Revelations 3 verse 20 that says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. But the Holy Spirit is saying he's not talking to unbelievers, but he is talking to us this morning. It is like the Lord is saying he wants to move deeply into our hearts. It is as if there are compartments of our hearts that have been closed off. And he wants us to open up to him so that he'll be able to accomplish what he wants to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm here to lead us in the covenant meal where we are sealing off everything um, by partaking as covenant children. I'd like us to position ourselves as kings and priests unto the Lord. Why are we partaking? We're partaking because we are remembering what Christ did for us at the cross. We are partaking because he said we should do it in order to proclaim his death until he comes. What does proclaiming mean? It means to validate. It means to give evidence to the victory that we have through the cross. Therefore, it means each time we partake of this meal, we have to come expectantly because there's no way you can have an encounter with the Lord and come out the same. Each time we meet the Lord, there's a change that takes place in us. And even this morning, as we partake, there are changes that shall take place in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, 
we have already cleansed ourselves because the word of God says a man ought to examine himself uh, before he eats. But I think through the prayers that have been done, we've been given the opportunity to, to introspect and cleanse ourselves. When we look at Matthew 26, which is showing there, verses 26 to 28, the word of God says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. Similarly, it says he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. Um, I'd like us at this point in time to take our positions as kings and priests and uh, just speak a blessing over the elements that are in front of us, releasing the power of the Holy Spirit, for it is the Holy Spirit that shall change it into tokens of his flesh and of his blood. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and in this time. We yes. just release the power of the Holy Spirit upon the elements in front of us. Yes. We thank you, my God, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you are changing, oh God, this juice into your blood. You changing, oh God, this, this biscuits into your flesh. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank, thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. Hallelujah. We continue and look at, at John chapter 6. And uh, the word of God says in verse 54, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. Now, Christ spoke these words. And he says, what we are partaking in this morning is actually symbolizing his flesh and his yes. blood, and he says, these are real food. These are food indeed, which means there's nothing that surpasses. Whatever we need, we will obtain from the token of his flesh and of his blood. Now, why does he call it real food and real drink? We go back to verse 55 that say, 54 that says, if they contain eternal lives. It says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. So the secret is in the eternal life that is in the token that we are holding in front of us. And this eternal life has the power to raise, which means this eternal life has resurrection power, glory be to God. It has the ability to bring back to life anything that has died in us. So in this meal, there is life. Hallelujah. Not only life, but there's eternal life. Hallelujah. So any deadness in us has no choice but to come to life as yes. we partake of this meal this morning. The resurrection power will touch us this morning yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. It will yes, touch Lord. our situations. It will touch our homes. It will touch our businesses. Mm. It will touch our nations. It will touch our churches in the name of Jesus Christ. So with this in mind, let us pray as we come before the Lord, before we partake. Father, we come before you in this first watch of the morning, thanking you, Lord, for the victory of the cross. Thanking you, Lord, for the resurrection power that is in the smear. We seal all the prayers that have been made this morning in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Indeed, we seal all the prayers that shall be made in this prayer retreat, in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, as we partake, we thank you that through the eternal life in this meal, you are bringing back to life all that has died in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that through the reconciling power of the blood of Jesus Christ, you are reconciling all creation to cooperate with you, O Lord, and bring to pass all that you've ordained for everyone's life on this platform today and in the rest of this retreat. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, we thank you, King of glory, 
for the purging sure. power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, purging our bloodlines this morning, even as we partake in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, hallelujah. May we partake of the token of his flesh. Hallelujah. May we partake of the token of the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Begin thank to thank so the much. Lord for what you believe Hallelujah. he has done. We thank can you. open our mics and thank the Lord. Thank you, Father. For activating the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ yes, over us. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The blood is speaking new thing over the The Lord and the blood is speaking a reset in our lives. The Lord and the blood is speaking a reset in our lives. The Lord is speaking a reset in our lives. The Lord is speaking a reset in our lives. The in the Lord for angelic visitations, for the ordinations that shall take place, the Lord for the sanctification, the Lord for the restoration, the Lord for the grace to obey, the Lord for the spirit of humility, the Lord for the spirit of mercy, the Lord for the joy and the peace, the Lord for the enlightening the Lord for the hope, the Lord for the hope, the Lord for the reposition, the Lord for the peace that is taking place in our lives, the Lord for the things that is doing in our bodies, the Lord for the restoration of the day of law, the son of the living God, the Lord for the Thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the power that is in your hands. We thank you for what you are doing. Bless your holy name. Worship to my God. Holy our lives Thank you for the blood. Thank you for what you are doing, the cleansing and the person. Thank you that you are preparing your army, Lord, in the sky. Thank you, my God, that you are preparing your bride in the name of our whole other name. We thank you, my God, for the wonders. Oh, Father, you are activating, oh God, in the season, in the sky, Lord. Thank you for the miraculous. Thank you for the for Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Beloved, thank you so much. Um, we bless the Lord for this awesome, awesome morning on the first day of our camp, our prayer camp. We thank God for his presence, his glory. Again, I'm grateful for the privilege uh, given to me by the head of intercession globally, Pastor Carol, and the team, as well as acknowledging the convener uh, of the Global Business Roundtable, Sipom Seleku. Bless you and thank you so much. 
Beloved, there's a program for the evening and we will gather back in the evening from, I think from about quarter past six, there'll be praise and worship. And the program will start around about half past six. Uh, the program is there. Um, it's been sent. I just want to encourage you, invite you to invite others, invite other nations. It's our goal to make sure that before the prayer camp ends, we have touched more than 15 nations. So if you know other people from other nations, can I ask you kindly to invite them? Invite them this evening, invite them tomorrow morning, invite them for the duration of this camp. There is so much on this platform for everyone. And bless you. And I just want to let you that we do have French interpretation. It's been going on since we started. It will be throughout the whole camp for our brothers who speak the French language from the French countries. We bless you and we also love you all. Thank you so much, Your Excellencies. Have a blessed, blessed morning. We love you all. If I did not acknowledge your nation, I didn't read the name of your nation. Like I said, we had, we had South Africa, Lesotho, Swaziland, Ghana, Gabon, Switzerland, Senegal, Kenya, Malawi, USA, Botswana, Belgium. And we're going to be joined by Mozambique and Zimbabwe. I hope they've joined. If not, they'll join us later. If I didn't acknowledge your nation, I acknowledge you. We love you. God loves you. We care for you. And God cares so much for you. That's why he sent his son. Thank you, everyone. You are so dearly loved. Let me just thank God in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for having graced us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you for everyone who's participated. Thank you for every excellences on this platform. Thank you for your name and your glory. Thank you for your presence that we feel so awesomely in the word you've spoken to us this morning. We pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, beloved. Amen. Amen. See you later on. Please, let's share this. Let's invite. The ad is there. The video ad is there. Let's share it. Let's share it everywhere in every platform. Let's invite everyone so they can partake. Thank you to all the speakers. You're such a blessing this morning to the glory of God. Thank you so much. Amen, beloved.